Hello everyone, welcome to this tutorial. Um, this video I am going to explain to you how the Kalma filter works based on um, a simple practical example uh, in order to understand uh, how we can use the Kalma filter algorithm in um, any practical example um, from your projects or from your work that you are doing. So the example that I'm going to explain is simply the localizing the vehicle in one dimension. This one dimension is, let's say, the x-axis of, of the Cartesian coordinates. And uh, here we can see the vehicle. That's uh, This vehicle is basically the, the actual vehicle, the ground truth. And uh, here we have the initial position that we assume that we already know, let's say the zero position and um, with this zero position we let's say we have some kind of uncertainty so this uncertainty is we can initialize uh, based on our knowledge of the initial position and then after um, the time interval capital T the actual vehicle come to this point to this position and what we do during this time interval that we can do um, several prediction steps from the camera filter so the camera filter has the first part which is the prediction step the prediction step is simply uh, the way that you make use of the system model that you know um, and that you formulated analytically based on the physical knowledge of the system that you are working on uh, and the external inputs that are fed to this system. Um, so the prediction step can be executed multiple times during this time interval uh, and uh, it depends on the execution cycles of the software uh, integrated in the ECU in the car here, for example. Uh, so let's let's say that um, it's every 10 milliseconds or 20 milliseconds the software is updated and during this update um, each time you execute the prediction step based on the the new inputs received here which is uh, expressed by the u vector and here this um, x vector is simply the uh, the previous um, estimated state from the previous cycle and that's the predicted state if that's the state transition matrix it's uh, the um, the model that you have from your system along with this b matrix the b matrix is the on the other hand is the input uh, transition matrix so it maps the input effect on each element in the state vector and the second equation here that's the um, prediction update for the covariance so the first term here is simply the transformation of the um, the previous um, estimated covariance using the f matrix so it's it depends on the uh, how the previous uh, state estimated state are mapped to the new estimated state so here this is a simple transformation uh, similar to this one here and then the second term is the addition of the process noise covariance so with each model that we come up with uh, or derive analytically there is uh, some cert um, some degree of uncertainty that comes with this uh, model and we model this uncertainty using this Q matrix so that's the covariance where we call it process noise covariance and the purpose of this addition term here is that every cycle that we execute the prediction step we we need to add more uncertainty in our predicted state because uh, intuitively so when you are keep doing prediction 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 for several cycles then your uncertainty increases every time and Till you receive a new measurement from a physical sensor which will do the correction and this is the next step that we are going to explain so 
here let's say the measurement sensor that we have is the GPS sensor and here we have the antenna that receives the signal from the GPS in order to identify the location of the car and um, here the measurement uh, signal is uh, formulated as the Z vector so it could be one element could be two element it depends on the sensor so let's say in this case we um, the GPS measures only position so it will be only one dimension uh, here the R that's similar to the Q matrix here here that's the measurement noise covariance and the measurement noise covariance that's the uncertainty uh, accompanied with the uh, physical sensor so um, let's say that every physical sensor comes with a data sheet uh, this data sheet might might not explain or uh, mention the uh, uncertainty or the noise uh, of the measurements from this physical sensor so how much error we, we should expect from the measurements that we receive so some data sheets um, can mention it some uh, does not so um, if there if we don't have this knowledge uh, from the data sheet uh, of the sensor noise or it's very hard to to know it uh, so we can drive this um, statistically so we can do some uh, rec um, measurements some experiments and with this experiments um, with the aid of having a ground truth system something that tells us where the actual position um, or the actual state is uh, and we are and this uh, ground truth system has a high um, certain knowledge of the actual state so by comparing the the um, the actual state from the ground truth system and the measurements we can we can somehow drive statistically uh, this r matrix this uncertainty so here we have this is the next step um, and this is part of the Kalman filter algorithm so here we calculate something called the residual or uh, in the literature also it can be called the innovation the innovation is basically the error or the deviation between the actual measurement so this is uh, z uh, subscription k that uh, that's the actual measurement from the physical sensor and here we subtract from it the this term this term is called the uh, predicted measurement and it's basically the predicted state from the prediction step cycle and we try to convert it to the measurement dimension so let's say that here we have velocity and uh, position and here we are measuring only positions so this um, term here we need to take only the position from the prediction step and uh, compare it with the position that we measured from the physical sensor the H matrix is the measurement model um, and since our the standard camera filter that we are explaining in this video is uh, as it works only with the linear systems so it assumes that the system is linear and any linear system can be modeled as a, a matrix in a matrix, matrix form like with matrix multiplications and additions like here so uh, the measurement model can also be modeled as um, matrix and that's the H matrix here so the dot product between the H matrix with the um, predicted state will give us the predicted measurement so after the calculation of the residual we also want to calculate the covariance uh, accompanied with this uh, or associated with this uh, uh, innovation or residual that's the S matrix here and as you see it's very simple to the uh, covariance prediction update that we have here at this step uh, however here we have the uh, measurement model instead of the uh, state transition matrix model and here we have the measurement covariance instead of the process noise covariance 
the state covariance that we have here is the from the prediction step, so the predicted covariance. And the, um, similar to this equation here, the first term is doing a transformation uh, of the uh, predicted covariance um, using the H matrix so that it's uh, it became the same dimension as the um, the innovation covariance or the residual covariance S. The R matrix is uh, to add uh, additional noise to this covariance based on the sensor that we are using to measure the state. So the next step or the final step is to do the actual uh, state uh, vector update and the process uh, or, or the state covariance update these two and um, in order to do this we have the three steps or three equations that we do the first equation is called the Kalman gain the K matrix that's the Kalman gain and it's basically a weighting or a ratio between the predicted covariance from the prediction step like this one the green one here and the S um, the S covariance or the residual covariance which we calculated at this step and um, the H transpose here is simply to do the um, the mapping or to have the dot product between these two the inverse of the S matrix and the P to do to be done correctly according to the linear algebra because in order to do the dot product the inner dimensions of uh, the two matrices that we are trying to multiply together should be equal or must be equal and since um, let's say for example this is two by two uh, the state covariance and the innovation covariance is one by one so this means that in between here we need to have some kind of mapping something that transform this um, uh, this uh, residual covariance from the 1-1 one, one dimension to the 2-1 dimension because this is 2 by 2 and here the H matrix um, is simply uh, 1 by 2 so the transpose of it so we replace uh, the num the columns by the vectors um, so this will be um, 2 by 1 and then when we multiply the 2 by 1 uh, H transpose with the uh, the inverse of the S matrix which is 1 by 1 then we will get the result uh, 2 by 1 matrix and when we, when we multiply it again when we do the dot product again with the P matrix which is 2 by 2 then we will have we will end up by um, the Kalman gain which will be 2 by 1 matrix and then the next step here is to do the update for the state vector so the update equation is basically here the first term that's the predicted state from the prediction step then we add to it the amount of correction that we are expecting and this correction depends on the Kalman gain so the Kalman gain that we the weight that we calculated from this step and the residual the residual that's the error between the actual measurement and the predicted measurement so here we based on the difference between the actual measurement and the predicted measurement so we can we give some kind of a weight based on their covariances to know how much uh, correction I should add to the predicted state that we calculated here and that's the new estimated state so if the Kalman gain values are zero so we are trusting completely the uh, the predicted state if the Kalman gain uh, tends to be one then we trust completely the um, the measurement that we have so we do all the correction um, the last equation the the uh, state covariance so the state covariance the the corrected one which is this one on the left hand side is basically the pre the predicted covariance the predicted covariance from the prediction step 
and we subtract from it this term. So why subtraction? Because with each correction, we are expecting that the uh, the uh, confidence in this new estimated state increase. So if we have this measurement and this is the prediction, so here the subtraction might, will result in um, a thinner uh, covariance bell shape here. So that's why here we have the subtraction. And um, the Kalman gain, um, this is basically the same as here. So we, we what we subtract actually is a weight, a weighted ratio of the predicted covariance. So we take the predicted covariance, we take a, a, some ratio from it, and this is the value that we subtract from the predicted covariance. And the H matrix here has the same role as the H transpose here. So it's just a kind of mapping in order for the dot product to, to, to work. So this is two by one, this is one by two. So the result of these two will be two by two and then two by two dot product with the P matrix, which is two by two, then the results here will be two by two and that's two by two and that's it. So that's the correction step and uh, the correction step can be executed only when we uh, know that we rec just received a, a new measurement here from the GPS, for example or in our example. And these two cycles will be repeated every time. So then the vehicle continue moving. So we keep doing pre prediction step uh, on the update rate of 10 milliseconds, every 10 milliseconds or 20 milliseconds. And then um, if the measurement sensor from the, you know, the, or the GPS gives us like new measurement every 100 milliseconds, then the correction step will be executed every 100 milliseconds, not necessarily to be executed uh, with each prediction step. So these two steps are completely isolated. That's it for this part of the tutorial. Thank you for watching. Please don't forget to like, subscribe to the channel and share this video with your community if you really find that this video is helpful. And see you next time.